Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2022 Ford F-250 and we're gonna be taking a look at and I'm gonna show you how to install the Firestone air compressor for your air helper springs. Adding an onboard air compressor is really gonna allow you to adjust the air pressure in your airbags for whatever you're hauling. Uh, the thing that I hate most about having a set of airbags on my truck is not having air available to be able to put air in them. So adding an onboard air compressor is really gonna allow you to do that. With this particular air compressor, you're gonna have a dual path, so it will send a signal to each airbag. Um, it's also going to include the amount of chucks that you need to still have your manual fills on the back of the truck. You're gonna have an auxiliary port that you can either run straight to the back of the truck and get direct air um, to be able to air up smaller things like golf cart tires, basketballs, um, bike tires, stuff like that. Or you can run that auxiliary port to an air tank and then you'll have a um, an air tank with compressed air in it up to 150 PSI because that's what this air compressor can handle. Now I'm going to put the truck up in the air and we're going to show you a closer look at the air compressor and the ECU. It's a super clean installation as you can see here. Um, I like to always route my airlines nice and neat so that if you have a problem in the future it's much easier to fix it than if you had a big wad of them stuck up here. Um, we've got our compressor here. You can see it's just self-tapped into the frame. And then we've got our ECU over here, also self-tapped into the frame. We do have the exhaust port over here, so don't be uh, alarmed that there's nothing connected in there. And then we've got our auxiliary port, which is going to be for your, um, your accessories to be able to air up a soccer ball or uh, maybe a small golf cart tire, something like that. And then you've got your left bag, your right bag, and then your air inlet from your compressor. The ECU is going to be the brains of the system. That's what's going to talk to your remote or your phone because you can get the Firestone app and control this from your phone. The catch is, is that you have to pick one. You have to either use your phone or you have to use the remote. You can't use both at the same time because it only has one um, way of connecting. So I personally have this system on my, my own truck. I like using the remote so that it's always in my truck. It is rechargeable. It comes with a charging cord for it. Um, I like using this so it's always in there. You can set two presets on here. Um, as you can see on this particular remote, this is how it comes from the factory, but they've got the airbag set at five PSI for each one of them for the setting one, and then setting two has it at 20. So the owner of this vehicle can set it. He typically likes to tow his skid loader trailer um, very, very far dis distances. And um, so that one's probably gonna end up being for his skid loader trailer because he tows it the most. So he can set it at 50 PSI if he wants. And then all you have to do is push that preset and then it's gonna automatically go to whatever PSI that you want it to. I do recommend having one of your presets be five PSI because that is going to be the minimum that the system will keep in your airbags in order to keep your airbags inflated. If you hit that five PSI, what I like about it is, is it just drops all the air out of your airbags. To begin our installation, we're gonna to need to get our compressor and our ECU mounted to the side of our frame ramp. Um, what I would recommend, and I've done it several times in the past and it works out great, is that Firestone has a bracket available that will bolt directly to your frame with a couple of U-bolts and then you just take these two items and you bolt them right to that plate. So that way in the future, if you ever have any problems, you pull the whole plate off and you can kind of look at the, uh, the issue and assess it and you don't have to work on it from the ground. The way that we did it is, um, is the way that the owner of this vehicle wanted it, is we just used some self-tappers and self-tap the um, the compressor into place and the ECU into place. So what I recommend is get, you, get yourself some really, really strong self-tapping screws. This frame is incredibly hard. You can drill some pilot holes. That'll help. Um, I will tell you, the reason we didn't show you this is because it was a really big pain. Um, you can use some um, smaller drill bits to drill yourself some pilot holes, but essentially, Get your compressor into your ECU, mount it to the side of your frame with some self-tapping screws. Now that we've got those in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start routing our wiring and our airline tubing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and route all of our airline tubing, get that in place, and we'll come back and show you that route. Now we're back, I've got our airlines all finished up. Um, what we've got here is we've got our auxiliary airline, which is the one we're gonna use for accessories and stuff like that. Uh, whether you want to air up a tire or something like that, that goes into this line. This one does not get anything in it. That just stays open. Um, it's an exhaust port. You can run a little, um, a little line up into, you know, into a dry space up here, but it really doesn't matter. You can just leave it open. Um, so that's our accessory. And then we go into our 
right bag, our left bag, and then this is going to be our supply. The supply line is right here to our compressor, so we have a real short line. If you decide to mount your compressor and ECU in this area, it works out great. If you have any problems, all your leaks are going to be either here or in one of those four. As for your auxiliary line and then your left and right bag lines, you just want to run them up over top of the frame rail. Anytime you can get above one of these frame rails, it's going to help you out a lot because then you don't ever have to worry about if these zip ties break in the future. It's just going to drop on top of that frame. Then we get to our first bag. You want to throw a T in there. One side will be the left bag coming in and then go down in the bottom of the T to the top of the bag and then come out of the T and go to the back of the truck. And then for our right bag, you're going to do the same thing. So we've got that right bag coming from our ECU into a T, down to the bag, to the back of the truck. As you're routing your hoses and stuff, just tie it off to factory lines. Um, they give you lots and lots of zip ties in your kit. I'd say use them all if you can. Um, and then they're going to give you these quick connect brackets. You just use a couple of big industrial zip ties that they have in the kit. Zip tie those to this part of the top of the hitch. And then the one on the right here is going to be our auxiliary port. Then we have our right bag manual fill. And then on the other side of our truck, we're going to have our left bag fill. This little black knob on the end of our compressor is going to be our air filter. This is where the air comes in for your compressor. Uh, this will come with a about a two foot long rubber hose that you can route it remotely up to a a dry spot, but if you don't plan on going in, into any deep water, I recommend just threading this right into the end of your compressor. The compressor is not submergible anyway, so I would say just mount it right into the end here. That way it's much easier for you to get to when you have to change the filter. Now moving on to the electrical side of things. Out of our compressor, we are gonna have a positive and negative wire coming out. The uh, ground will have the ring terminal included on it. You don't have to put another one on if you don't plan on shortening this wire. We are not going to. I'm just going to route this up behind the compressor, route it over, just trying to make everything nice and neat. And then you'll see right up over here, that's where I'm going to ground it. I'll just take a self-tapping screw um, that's included in your kit and tap that right into the frame for our ground. And then for our compressor power wire, we're going to route that up here too. And then eventually it's going to get plugged into a wire coming off the ECU harness. As for the wiring harness goes, um, what we're going to need to do is we have this plug here that's going to go on the top of the ECU. It'll plug right into the, the harness up there. And then um, when it comes to our this other plug here, that is going to get connected to the um, this little spade terminal that is coming from our compressor. That's how it's going to get its power. And this, sometimes I'll cut these off, but these are actually really good connectors. What I'll do is I'll connect them and then I'll wrap the whole thing up with electrical tape. Now with our two connections made here, um, we just connected it on top of our box. You want to make sure that those clips, they clip into place so that the wiring harness does not come um, unplugged whenever you're driving down the road. And then we made that connection to the positive wire of our compressor. We took the large wire. The nice thing about this kit is, a, is that it's all pre-wire loom, which makes it really nice and easy to route it on top of your factory wiring and then just zip tie it along the way. I zip tie it about every 12 inches. And once you get it here, you want to route it up into the engine bay. Now we've got our wiring harness up into the engine bay. We need to make two connections with the Firestone uh, harness. You do not have to connect the ignition wire. Uh, that's this yellow one here. It just, it's going to know uh, when to turn on uh, based off of movement in the vehicle. So. We've got our ground wire, which is the, um, the black wire here. We just grounded it to the negative side of the battery. And then our power wire, we um, connected to the positive side of our battery. You do want to make sure that your fuse is out of the fuse holder when you do this or make this connection, because we're going to want to connect our remote within a, a, a few minutes of putting that fuse in place. Now with our remote nearby, we're going to Activate the remote, wait for it to turn on. So it says that nothing has been found. We've got it holding there for us. We'll take our fuse, put it in place. We'll hear our compressor kick on, which is a good sign. And then we're going to hit retry. As 
says not found, so we'll try scan new. There we go, it found one right up there. We'll click that, and then we're gonna have to put in the passcode that is on our particular kit. After we put in the passcode, it connected up to our compressor, or to our ECU, really. We're gonna check it out. Go up to 15 PSI. Make sure it stops there. Now with this particular compressor, it likes to go to PSI past, and then it'll kind of pulsate, letting out the air to get to your desired PSI rating. Now that we know the compressor is working properly, I've got it pumping up to 50 PSI. We can go underneath and we can check our airbags for any leaks. Starting to here at our ECU, we're gonna spray each one of these connections and make sure there's no air coming out of them. The way that you'll know that you have air is you're gonna have rapid forming bubbles at these connections. Of course, you're gonna see some bubbles because we got the soapy water here, but you don't see any new bubbles forming at those connection sites. So we'll do those four. We'll do this one here. Well guys, once you know that all your connections are leak free and all of your um, electrical connections are nice and tidy up and out of the way, that's gonna do it for the installation.